Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and as you can see, I'm still standing. I, I'm actually shooting two videos back to back, so I figured if if it doesn't work out, I'm sorry. Standing doesn't work out for two videos uh, for the opening intro. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today might be one called Clock and Learn. So recently, within the last few months, I fulfilled one of my dreams. I finally broke down and bought an Atmos clock. I will attempt to say the name once. It's made by the company with the initials JLC, JJ Le Coltere. I do not say it. I do not have the accent. I can't do it. But I will refer to it as JLC. So the the JLC Atmos is a clock that's been around since around the 1920s or so. Uh, the idea for them has been around for about a couple more centuries, more than that. What is so special about the Atmos, if you don't know, the Atmos is a clock that runs solely on changes in atmospheric pressure and or, and or temperature, because temperature changes pressure. Uh, basically, it almost fulfills the perpetual motion machine criteria, something that you look at it and you don't seem to add any energy to it, and it just continues to run and run and run. And they run for decades without service. The only reason they ever need service is because they get gunked up pretty much, you know, from atmospheric debris and, and, and the works get all gummy. Uh, but I recently picked one up off of eBay. I, I don't know, it's somewhere in the 70s or 80s, I think, 1970s, 1980s. It was produced by the serial number. And I didn't get a new one because I didn't want to shell out the five or six grand that the new ones are. And you can get these used ones for they're very affordable i uh, i think i spent seven or eight hundred bucks on mine it was recently repaired serviced timed the whole nine yards so basically i was getting a clock that i knew was working uh it's like i said i finally got it it's been in my house for several months now and i absolutely love it and i really wanted to do a video on it since I think engineering wise, it's probably one of the coolest clocks I've ever seen. Uh, I think you'll appreciate it too. I shot some time-lapse video on it uh, to show you kind of how it works. Um, I'm gonna go through it. That's basically the purpose of the video today is just to explain to you how the clock works and uh, we'll get into that in a second. I'll do a wrist check. If you watched the last Casio video, I'm still wearing the same watches because I'm filming this on the same exact day. The, and I don't change the watches during the day. 009 Super on the Super Jubilee and the Squale TGV Edition Lion Shark. Uh, and actually, I know TGV sometimes in videos, he's got an Atmos. And I know when I, when I saw that he had one, I was like, damn, I got to get one. I've always wanted one. And he's like, go to eBay. They're super affordable. So I finally picked one up and uh, let's check it out. So here is my JLC Atmos clock. Um, it's currently locked. I've locked the locking lever since I'm going to be moving it around. And it's very delicate, and you don't want to jostle it around while it's running. But anyway, I bought this off of eBay. Um, I found a seller. I liked what he showed. I liked the listing. Bought it. I was extremely happy. Didn't tell him anything about who I was. Not that I'm famous, but that I was going to probably do a video on it. Um, it was House of Atmos. The gentleman's name was Alex. I was just extremely happy uh, with his service. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just merely a happy customer. So this is the Atmos clock that I purchased. Um, I have it on a rotating stand uh, down here, and I'm actually zoomed all the way back, as you can see, because it takes up my entire photo studio here. Uh, I'm going to go in a minute, and we'll rotate it around, and we'll check it out. But I thought on, on the... The turntable was probably the easiest way for me to spin it uh, and show you different parts of it. What I'd like to do, I think, is break down the clock on how it works, the you know all the theory behind it, and then we will. Like I guess I did a time lapse of the clock winding itself. Um, I'll do that, and at the end, I guess I'll you know, level it out and have it run a little bit uh, so you can check it out. I hope you find it enjoyable. Like I said, for me, this is like the culmination of everything that you learn in engineering that can't happen. It's basically a clock that runs by itself. We know that's not true. It's drawing its power 
from the atmosphere, but we can't see it. We see a windmill turn. Um, you can eat, you can see, you know, tidal energy. This you don't see anything. Nothing is happening because it's happening so slow that it's imperceptible to you. So let's let's check out the clock and how it works. Okay, so I've zoomed in on the clock itself. Um, I'm omitting, you can't see, well, here's my pen, right? So there down here is the base, the part that I'm tapping on, you can't see it. And then above this 12, there's a release latch that you can't see now um, to take off the front glass if you ever need to. Um, as a user, you'll never need to. Um, just so you, you can see that I'm trying to get in as tight as I can without omitting anything that's important to uh, get into the functionality of it. So we're zoomed all the way out. So let's just zoom in and check out the clock itself. We can see the manufacturer's name, JLC, Atmos. Underneath that, of, indeed, we see Swiss made. You can see at the bottom of your screen, let's zoom out just a bit, you can see that ruby there that jewel so there are obviously are jewels in the movement which is good we know jewels from other watch and learns over here is a little nod that the watch you can see in text it's written unadjusted uh i don't know how adjustment works in clocks in watches sure there's six positions but clocks are meant to run in one position and that position is upright uh if your clock is on its side or upside down you probably have larger issues you will also see at the bottom of the dial uh, Swiss made right underneath the six. Uh, other things that you can kind of see, this is part of the escapement, the silver line up here. That's the part that goes back and forth uh, that activates the minutes. And then when we zoom all the way out and we look at the bottom, this is the torsional pendulum. This spins, doesn't swing, it spins like this. And we'll see that when we activate the clock. It spins back and forth at the unbelievable rate of once every 30 seconds uh, so it's two beats a minute so what is that 120 bph so your eta is 28,800 beats per hour this is 120 beats per hour uh, such that this the minute hand moves twice a minute uh, pretty cool stuff so what i'm going to do now is i will turn on the table and we'll rotate the clock 90 degrees and we'll start to talk about some of the other parts of it. Before we do that, I wanted to show you one thing. I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to talk about this white thing underneath the pendulum. I just had to lift up the camera so you can see it. I'm going to zoom in on it. It is actually a bubble. Whoops. It is actually a bubble spirit level. You can see a bubble inside. If I can get my head over the top of it, I would see that the bubble is not concentric within that black circle. So this is basically telling me the clock is not level. The clock will not run if I start it uh, because it's so sensitive to how, um, how level it is. There are leveling feet in the clock. You can see two studs here, one here, one here, and you can access those from underneath and you can unscrew it and you can make the clock level so that it runs properly. So now let's spin the clock and check it out. Okay, so now we're looking at the clock from its right side. The dial is over here and then we see the main component of the clock. This large brass ring or tube, if you will, is closed on both sides. And inside there is where all the Atmos magic happens. Now, if you think about a conventional watch, a battery watch, it stores its energy in the battery, and then it's got a quartz oscillator, and that it tells it how fast to tick. Uh, if you have an automatic, you have a mainspring. The mainspring is wound up and it holds the energy, and the clock then releases it with the escapement. This clock has all the same degrees of, of components. They just work in different ways. So where on the manual or automatic watch, you have to wear it or you have to shake it or you have to wind it to get the spring. That action is all handled now within this brass housing here. Okay. And then as far as storing the energy, there is the part that my pen is just over. You see that piece of brass back there? It's a mainspring housing, and there is a spring in there. So it's a normal clock. There's an escapement up at the top that you can't see. There's a regulation lever. But the watch, the watch, yeah, I'm already doing it. The clock runs on all the same ideas, all the same principles. The only thing that makes the Atmos really different 
is this thing back here. And this is what winds it. Think of this as an auto winder. So what the heck is this thing? Well, it's really simple, actually. If you were to take this housing apart, which I am not going to do, um, you can. I'll try to get some photos from the internet and pop them up here. But inside there is an accordion, a squeeze box, if you will, something you know with with um, zigzag sides that can go in and out, in and out. It does it extremely slowly. That squeeze box is filled with ethyl chloride, which is a chemical that boils at around 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So in our environment, in our normal environment, it's a gas. It is held inside, again, in here, this is just a cover. Inside here is this bellows, this thing that goes in and out. It is filled with ethyl chloride, and it's under pressure. So some of it is gaseous, and some of it is, is liquid. And that is something for some of you chemists or other, you, other engineers out there with a basic, uh, a decent chemical background. So you have this gaseous and liquid mixture inside this bellows. And when it gets warmer, more of the liquid wants to evaporate inside this bellows. And we know when things get warmer and they evaporate, they expand, so it pushes the bellows out. So let's say this side's fixed. It pushes the bellows this way. And then when it gets cold, some of that gas wants to now condense back into a liquid, and it pulls the bellows this way. So we've created an action based on the atmosphere, based on, as a matter of fact, one degree of temperature will, will charge the clock for like two days or something crazy like that. Uh, so we have now made an action that with temperature swings goes like this. So this is excellent. We've, we're creating work. We're creating something moving. So we can now use that to wind a spring and the rest of it and that's it the rest of it is just winding the spring and releasing the energy in a timed fashion so that you get an accurate clock that's all this is think of it as an auto winder that runs on temperature and i'm gonna see if i can get in there if not we'll turn it 180 and we'll get in there again you know so it's tough getting access to things i don't want to open it and put the camera in so i'm i'm trying my best to get good camera angles so i'm going to show you the actual zooming process so you can see what i'm going to be talking about ready here we go and we're moving we're moving we're moving and i'm going to try to get as close as i can once it loses i'll back out a bit i got it so now i'm going to just put the pen over the part do you see that little bead chain right here going left to right I'm going to pull the pen out of the way so it refocuses. It appears to be going into the bellows, into the right. In front of it is another spring, this spring that's going right here. That chain is being pulled and pushed by the bellows inside that big brass can. That big brass can is also supported by a couple of springs such that when the can expands, so hear me out here, when the can, when the bellows expands, it's going to push the chain out. And how do you push a chain out? Well, the chain is suspended by a spring on this side, and inside there's more springs. So it pushes the chain out, and then when the temperature comes back in, it's going to the springs inside that push the bellows back, and it is going to pull the chain back in. So that chain is going in and out, in and out, very slowly, all day, every day. My clock was, I believe, fully wound when I got it. So the time lapse I shot of that chain moving that I'll show you in a bit um, isn't that great, but it, it gives you an idea of how it works. So I'm going to continue the rotation process, and we'll, we'll check out the other side. I like to show you the rotation process so you can get a feel for everything and how it looks. Um, so here's that big brass can. In here is that big bellows we just talked about. It's going in and out of the plane of your uh, computer screen right now. And then shortly it'll be going left to right. But I'm going to try to get my finger underneath to turn off the turntable. Oy. There it is. And kill it. Not bad. Maybe we'll, actually, I think it, I can twist it just a little bit. There we go. So now we're looking. The dial is over here. So now we're looking at the left side of the clock. And I can still see the pendulum at the bottom. Now, you get you get a feel for more stuff here. Um, I'm going to first zoom in decently. All this stuff on the right here, to the right of this line, pretty much is all your hand gearing escapement from moving the minute hand. You know, the hour hand has to move 60 times as fast as the minute hand etc etc it's all very simple it all makes a lot of sense this is all conventional watchmaking clock making 
Uh, everything is conventional except for, again, this big brass can. Everything else is the same. That's why there should be no confusion here. It's just a totally simple idea. Um, totally amazing. Like I said, I believe, you know, atmospherically driven clocks came out sometime in the 1700s. JLC kind of came out with what we call the Atmos sometime, sometime in the 1920s. Um, so not, nothing really new here. And when we look over here now, and the time lapse will really help out with this one. But I want to show everything to you because the time lapse, I shot it and I'm going to, I'll voice over it, but I can't get my fingers in the way to show you anything. So you gotta, I got to explain everything now. Inside this can is the mainspring. So this is coiled up and it releases this gear that my pen is over very slowly. And that spins all the rest of the gears that power the movement. Uh, and eventually makes its way all the way up to the escapement, which is at the top. And that is what powers the clock. So now we can, I'm going to just go a little bit camera left now. There we go. I'm going to zoom in as much as I can on this area. And you're going to see this area again later in the time lapse. Ah, beautiful. This is, this is good. Very nice. Very nice. So now we see that chain again, that this uh, small link chain. It's going away from you. It's going into the bellows. You see it traveling backwards. We have that big spring in the back again. You know, go and rewind the video if you have to, to, to see what we're looking at from the other side. Uh, it's going back into the movement, and that chain is being pulled and pushed out. Again, you can't pull and push a chain, but the chain is tensioned on both sides by springs, so it works. Uh, and this chain, if you look all the way at the bottom, and I'll show you in a minute, is attached to that spring that's over here. And what that does is when the temperature warms up, so the bellows is going to come out, it's going to expand. The chain is going to come out. And when the chain comes out, it's basically relaxing. It's you spinning the crown. Uh, let's see. Let, let's say you wind your watch clockwise with the crown. It's you sp using your thumb and your forefinger. It's you going counterclockwise. It's getting you ready. And then when the temperature drops, it's you spinning it clockwise. So now when the temperature drops, it pulls the chain. And the chain is linked to this ratcheted mechanism here, and you'll see all that in a minute, and it winds the spring. You see the black peeking through here? That's the spring inside there. So the whole thing works in harmony. Um, whoops, I lost it again. Uh, if you look on the side of this gear, it's tough for me to see it here, but there's a little ratchet and a pull, and that will also become apparent in the time lapse that I show you. The time lapse, I, I keep talking about it like it's the greatest thing on earth, but it's not. It only, it only lasts uh, a minute at most, I think. Uh, so, But that's how it works. There's a pulley going inside the can, and the chain wraps around it, and there's a pulley over here attached to the main spring. And that winds the clock. Once you wind the clock, you have energy. Once you have energy, you need an escapement to let go of that energy in a steady release form. And then once you have that, you need gears to attach hands to to tell the time. That is the Atmos. So let's continue the rotation. So there it goes. Now the dial side is coming towards you again. And you can see the hands are coming into view. And we're back to where we started. Um, I will now take the clock off of the stand. I will level it and I will let it run. So before we run it, I would be remiss if I didn't show you the regulation lever. I think you can see it here, this little lever. And there's an S and an F. I think it's an S and an F. I really can't see. Uh, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. One direction is faster, one direction is slower. Over here is the handle to pull and release the glass if you ever needed to, which I'm not sure why you would. And I guess, you know what, we can probably get a good look at the spirit level now. So there it is. I've leveled it as best as I can. You know, this isn't exactly a great table. Uh, and then, um, you know, I did mention the, the locking lever. So what is the locking lever? The locking lever basically sits, it's under, it's under the clock, and when you activate it, it pushes up and locks the pendulum. The pendulum is hanging from a very... Like, like most, you know, like most hairsprings, a very low CTE coefficient of thermal expansion wire, and it spins very slowly, very de deliberately, and it's very fragile. Uh, it spins in a very, very low friction manner, obviously, and you just have to really be careful when you transport the clock, you have to lock it, because if you don't lock it, you'll wind up snapping that spring, and then I, I guess that that's going to require a lot of service after that point. Okay, so I'm going to release the lever now, and you'll see as I release it, the pendulum will kind of drop, 
and it's going to rattle around a bit, and that's what it does. I'm sorry, I'm not fully in focus on the pendulum. I don't want to jostle it too much. So now the pendulum will start spinning. Like I said, it's going to it's gonna wobble a bit because I just unlocked it, but eventually it stops wobbling, and that's one of the reasons you're supposed to keep it on a very sturdy surface that doesn't move around a lot. Uh, of course, this whole time I've had it locked, so that's acceptable. Uh, and it's going to go from full full direction to full direction every 30 seconds. And in the middle of its rotation, if you watch, just keep your eye on the minute hand, it will advance. And the escapement is this silver thing up here, right below the 12. And if you just keep watching, the minute hand will advance. And basically, it's a very low energy system. It's This pendulum is obviously very heavy. The clock itself is heavy, but I have a feeling a lot of that's the base. It's very low friction very low energy. Uh, I believe the power reserve of these things is something like four months. Um, so, but here's the thing. It's always winding itself. You can, you like can't stop it from winding. Uh, so once it's, you know, wound, you wind, you obviously would wind it manually. And then once it's, once it's there, it's just going to keep topping itself off constantly. So isochronism is never an issue here. The, the spring, I guess unless you kept it in a constant thermal, a constant temperature thermal chamber, it, it's going to constantly wind itself. But that's probably impossible because even a swing of a quarter or half a degree is going to keep winding this thing up. And I don't know if you, I haven't been watching it, but I know the minute hand has been moving. Uh, how do you set the time? Maybe you want to know that. You, that's you, have, you do have to take the glass off and you just rotate the hand, the minute hand only with your finger. Kind of very, uh, very low tech, but it works. Uh, it does have an adjustment, a, a regulator adjustment, and it does have to be adjusted based on where it is. Uh, you know, this came from obviously another state, so I ha I'm letting it run for months before I actually even touch the lever, but it seems to be running, you know, extremely, extremely accurately. So what I want to do now is uh, just show you that um, the, the, the time lapse I took of it winding and we'll finally finish up uh, the video. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at that left side view of the clock. You can see that chain again, uh, the main spring, and then in between them is that silver gear. You, you're you going to want to watch that. You're going to probably want to replay this part a couple of times so you can see what's going on. But pretty much this was shot over the course of uh, most of a day, I think, like, well, most of a day for me, at least, six to eight hours of recording time. It turns out I only really needed like an hour or so. So you're going to see about a minute, and it is 100 times speed. So what you're going to see is about an hour and 40 minutes or so of footage. And you'll see the screen will light up, and the screen will darken. And when it's lighting up, that's when it's being heated. So when it's heating, we should see the chain get longer. It should come out of the bellows. Uh, and then when it cools, here's where it wasn't as great as I thought it would be. You'll see it go back in, but it goes back in so slowly because why? Well, the clock is fully wound. It has to be. Um, I've had it for a long time. I've had it for a few months. It's certainly fully wound, so you really don't see much winding action. But I'm going to press play now, and let's watch what happens. So you're going to see, watch that chain as it goes. So the, the light is on, and you can see the chain. It's certainly going down, and if you watch that pull and ratchet, you see it's click, it just clicked. It's clicking into place. So this is you, like, backspinning on the crown of your watch, getting ready to wind it. And then I will eventually, the light, the light just flipped off, so it's going to expand a little bit more. And now if you watch it, if you pull the slider across, the chain is retracting back into the bellows. And what's happening is it's, now pulling that silver gear up, if you will, it's pulling the pole and ratchet up, and it is winding the spring ever so slightly. Believe me, it's really happening. Um, maybe if you put your finger on the screen and hold it there for a minute or two, you'll see what goes on. But I'm going to let this run just for another 10 or 15 seconds or so, because after that point, it kind of stopped moving. Um, but that is about it, that continual cooling and heating, cooling and heating. Um, I obviously exacerbated the situation by turning a lamp on. Um, but that cooling and heating is what really made the clock, is what makes the bellows move and it's what makes the clock wind. I guess I'm still letting it play over a minute because I can't stop talking. Um, but you can see on the right, you see the escapement going back and forth. Um, every time it goes back and forth once, that's a minute. You see all the gears spinning. You can see the shaft coming um, behind that silver gear. 
and that is the clock itself, uh, the torsion pendulum going back and forth. Uh, it's all really cool stuff. Um, just an amazing marvel of engineering, and uh, it runs on virtually nothing. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I hope the time lapse was worth it. I mean, I it took me like a weekend to shoot. Uh, you know, nobody walked by this area. I'm filming something. Uh, and the way I got that to work was I was I had a halogen light in, uh, in the vicinity, and I would turn it on and off to uh, make the spring... Uh, make the air heat up and, and, and the springs expand and contract and, and vice versa. Uh, anyway, uh, here comes my thumb. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com with Watch and Learn showing you, or Clock and Learn, showing you how the uh, JLC Atmos clock works. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.